sorry. Um, I was just, you know, nothing, nothing to see here. I was just staring at these pancakes. I, I, I wasn't eating them. I'm, I promise. Um, so this video is going to be all about Pancake View. Pancake View is an awesome control for Xamarin Forms that lets you do gradients, borders, shapes, shadows, all the good stuff, um, and very easy too. So let's see what this is all about. First, let's have a quick look at the repository for the Pancake View. So here it is. Um, you can find the link in the comments and um, on screen right now. So this is github.com slash stavison slash examine.forms.pancakeview. Um, here you can find everything to get started with this. And you can also see some screenshots of how it will look like. So it has this awesome icon that we've already seen. Um, and here you can see this is this is all part of the sample app. So if you need more elaborate samples, um, this is included in the repository right here. Um, and you can also see the screenshot right here. So this has all these crazy examples. And we're going to see a few of them in, in this video. Um, so how to use it? Uh, there is some great wiki articles. So make sure to go over that. And maybe more importantly, the platform support um, also on the wiki. So um, I think it supports a majority of platforms. And it all kind of depends on the features you want to use. So if we go into borders, for example, and we scroll down here a little bit, then you can see um, what is supported on what platform. So, you know, iOS, Android, the UWP, uh, Mac OS Tizen WPF is in there, but you can see here, um, not for borders at least. So, but because this column is, is in here, I expect that there is some features that are supported on WPF. So um, go check it out and make sure that uh, whatever you need is in here. Or of course, if you are the WPF expert and you can contribute this to the library, um, please go out and do that. I know Steven will appreciate it. Now let's switch over to Visual Studio where I have created a file new Xamarin Forms project. So nothing fancy, this is just a default template and we're going to add some um, pancake view magic in here. So the first thing we want to do, I'm going to stop this debugging session right here. And um, in our solution explorer, we are going to install the NuGet package for the pancake view. So since the name is pretty unique, we should be able to just uh, search for pancake view and it will come up. Um, so there it is, uh, 2.1, the latest stable version. Let's add that package and we're going to install that on all of our platforms here. Of course, if you have more platforms, make sure to um, install them on those as well. Maybe if you have some um, other Windows um, projects in there, make sure to switch over to your Windows Visual Studio and uh, also include the NuGet packages there um, because you can't run anything on a Mac and you can't run the Mac projects on your Windows thing right now. So um, if you need to have all of those, make sure to do it on both platforms. Um, here we go, the packages are added. Uh, there's no initialization code needed, except for maybe on UWP. Again, check the wiki for that. Uh, there is some um, note about that one. Uh, but other than that, there's no initialization code. So the cool thing is we can just um, drop this into wherever you're using a, a frame basically, because it has a lot of things that a frame has as well. And what we want to do also is um, add the new namespace. So I'm just going to type it here, um, add whatever you like here. So I'm going to use yummy be just because it's funny. <laughs> um, and I'm going to say pancake view. And now the IntelliSense will know to import the uh, namespace um, and as the yummy name. So let's do that right now. See, here we go. It suggests us to add the XML namespace as the pancake view. And boom, there we go. Uh, we have yummy now as uh, this namespace thing here and we don't have to type this all ourselves. So that's great. Um, you can see this code just works. So it still has a background color. It still has a padding. Uh, so this, this just works fine. Um, but let's see what we can now do with adding gradients. So for adding gradients, there's a couple of things we need to do. Um, we have to specify the um, background gradient start point. Um, and we can say that is in values from uh, zero to one. Um, and it's basically like a coordinate system. So we're just going to start this at zero, zero. And you can also specify the um, endpoint. 
and we're going to make that 0, 1. So with this, our gradient will just go from top to bottom, basically. And if you uh, start um, um, changing this, you can um, influence the way how they are shown. So I probably want to remove this background color because that's what we're going to replace. Um, and note, if you have used Pancake View before, then you could simply set um, here the uh, gradient end color and start color. That's not possible anymore. You will have to use this new property. Um, so we are going to use the um, yummy pancake view um, dot background gradient stops. So here we go. And with this, we can uh, provide multiple stops. So you can um, incorporate multiple colors. You can put the whole rainbow in here if that's what you want. Um, and this has to be a um, gradient stop collection. So here we go. Let's put that one in. And um, here we can add gradient stops. So um, the gradient stop there we go and a gradient stop has a color so that will be the color that uh, is going to to be uh, the start of our gradient so um, you know let's just start with red let's do something good and uh, you also have to specify the offset so from where to where so you can also specify between the different stops um, how big the offset needs to be so how long stretch basically this color needs to be uh, but because this is all even so let's start with um, um, yeah all even distribution so i'm going to add three here and this one's going to go to half um, and it's going to be orange and uh, this last one is going to be yellow and is going to um, go to the offset of one so now they're evenly distributed um, let's just run this and see what that um, answer gives us so here we go we have a beautiful gradient going from red to orange to yellow um, you can see it here at the top <clears throat> So here we go. Now we have a beautiful gradient going from red to orange to yellow uh, all the way to the bottom. So uh, that is pretty cool. Um, very easy to implement. Uh, so if you just want to use two colors uh, by the use of example hot reload, um, I can just change this right now. And you can see it just goes from, from red to yellow now. And you can uh, make this distribution a little bit different. So I'm going to say I'm going to do this to a quarter and then let this start from um, three quarters. And you can see that um, it, it changes a little bit. So this is how you can distribute the, um, yeah, the different colors and how they're shown. And that's basically how you can use gradient. So why stop there? Uh, we're go just going to add another pancake view and we're going to wrap that around these labels here. So I'm going to make another yummy pancake view. Um, let's do it like this. And the end element needs to go here. And then I need to wrap these into a new stack layout. There we go. Just so everyone will, everything will still show up nicely. Um, so here we go. Do a nice layout. Um, you don't see any difference now because by default it's, um, it's invisible. But if I give this a background color, um, of Alice blue, you can see it's, it's wrapped around there see um, so let's make this a little bit I'm going to add it some margins just so we can see um, that um, uh, yeah we can see what's going on from here and let's give it a background color of Azure because that's always good so here we go now we have a nice um, Azure little box with with our labels and what we are going to add here is a couple of borders because besides gradients you can also do great things with borders on the pancake view so for this we kind of follow the same pattern as the gradients so we are just going to do the uh, pancake view and say dot border and what we are going to specify here is a border um, and what we can do is give that a color as well so make this like an actual blue one so this is all nice uh, styled because i'm a great styler and we can give that a thickness uh, which will be like the, the the thickness of the border and whenever i save this you can see we get a great little border around our um, our little pancake view here so another way to do this 
is um, by a um, markup extension. So we can also go here and say border is, and we have the um, border markup here. So this makes it a little less verbose. Um, and you can say things also like the color. So the color is, um, if you want to use hex values, of course you can do that too. Um, oops, some little IntelliSense thing here. Stop doing that, please. And you can say, okay, I want this to be, I don't know what this is, um, something like this. And then we, of course, need to remove this one because that's not going to work. And then our border doesn't show up because I didn't give it a thickness. Okay, so there we go. Thickness is 10. Again, uh, ah, I forgot to comma. Okay. There we go. Oh, this is actually a nice color that matches the header. So really good. So this is a, another way of writing our, our little border here, which uh, makes it a, less, a little less verbose. So, but the reason for the other notation is because you can also use gradients with borders together. So if I just um, undo all of this, go back, go back, go back, go back, and we use this one, then within this border, if we do not make it self-closing, here we go, Within this border, we can also specify border dot, whoops, not an end element, border dot gradient stops, see? So this has the same gradient stops um, as we've seen here above. So I could basically just copy and paste this one and add that in here. Then I probably want to remove this color again. Um, here we go, and if I save this, then boom, we have this same gradient uh, going on here on the border. So that's pretty cool, right? So that is the reason for this different notation. This is something that you can do with the markup. So if you just want to have a border, uh, nothing special, then that's what you can do with the markup extension. Uh, but this is something uh, that will give you a little bit more um, yeah, fine grained control over what your border will look like and also add your awesome gradients to that. So another thing we can do is add a um, corner. So we can here say corner radius, and this is uh, also a short notation. You so you can just specify the angles here. So if you want to, you can also do all corners independently. So we can just uh, make this uh, like this, 10, 20, 30, 40. And you can see that each corner is, um, yeah, you know, um, um, shaped differently. So uh, that will, uh, let you have again fine grain control over the uh, design that you want to have with this. Uh, you can see the border automatically um, adjusts as well. So this all looks very nice and you can do great things with this. Um, lastly, what you might also want to do is add a shadow. Um, so uh, we can uh, use uh, the kind of same notation as with the um, gradients and, and the borders and stuff. And we can just say uh, pancake view shadow. And in here we can uh, say uh, we want to add a drop shadow. So uh, this notation allows for more shadows. I don't know what other shadows you might want to have, but you know, maybe in the future more shadows will be added. Uh, you can say color. I think color is something that is only supported on iOS mostly. I know Android is a bit limited on what you can do with shadows, so please keep that in mind. Uh, and for the fun of it, let's just make it orange because we are on iOS anyway. Um, and you can also specify the offset, so uh, where uh, relative to this pancake view you want to have the shadow, uh, which is the X and the, and the Y. So we're just going to set this to 10 and 10. And if we do this, you can see it got a nice little orange shadow as well. So that is also something uh, that you can do with this great library. Um, so you can also do this in a different notation. So I'll just put this in, in comments for now. And we can also have the short form notation here. So we have this uh, shadow uh, property here and we can say shadow markup. Um, and you can also here specify the color and you can see it also has a blur radius and an opacity. So if we set the color to orange here again and the offset, uh, we probably need to add quotes here so it won't get confused on what we're trying to do. Uh, and this will give us the same thing just to show you that it indeed does the thing. Let's set this to red and see that it changes to red now. See, so this is just a different notation, which will um, is less verbose again, but does the exact same thing. 
Um, now there's more to discover in this library. You can do also some things with uh, shapes. So create your own custom crazy shapes with this. Uh, there's more options for the shadows, for the borders, for basically everything. Um, so go check that out yourself in the repository um, and uh, go make those crazy awesome designs with all the gradients everywhere. There you have it. No more reason to not have great looking apps um, so go out, make all your apps compatible with Pancake View. Try not to get too hungry while doing it. Um, add all those crazy border shapes, things, gradients. Um, everything will look so retro in 80s. It will blow your mind. It's crazy. Thank you again for watching. Make sure to watch the next video. And to be notified, just click that like button here. Uh, click the subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that little bell um, so we, you will be notified whenever a new video comes out. And I'll hope to see you then.